that we're not quite alone. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I will open the public hearing. Uh, um, Pam Ian. Thank you, council members. My name is Pam Ian. I live at 296 Pleasant Street in Concord. I've been a resident here since 1996. As a former police officer, I find the militarization of the police over the past few years to be very disconcerting and disturbing. The city of Concord does not need this vehicle. The original intent of police departments was to protect and serve. And with this type of vehicle, it reinforces a sense of predatory government at work. Police officers swear to uphold the Constitution and their allegiance should be to that document <coughs> and not to the whims of government agencies. And unfortunately, I do not believe that many officers understand this distinction today. My second point is the federal government is in $17 trillion worth of debt. Okay, I know that's a, a big number. It's hard to get your minds around. The more time that we say we're going to take free money from the federal government through grants or whatever is ruining the economic future of this country. And I've heard it said here today, well, if, if we don't take it, someone else will. It's the responsibility of local and municipal governments to set an example to our federal government, which has proven to be very irresponsible. And I will accept any questions. Councilor Kroger. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Next month, the City Council will be having a public hearing with regards to $46,000 to spend on swift water rescue equipment through Homeland Security. Should we also deny that grant? Where is the government getting, if the government is in debt, $17 trillion, would you please tell me where they're getting the money from? Are they printing it? Are they raising taxes? They don't have it. They're in debt. And I just don't think that the local governments should be contributing. I hear the same thing at the State House with the Medicaid money, that it's free money from them, they're going to pay for it. It's coming out of our tax money. And this, the federal government has proven that it is very irresponsible with money. And I don't think we should be contributing to it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Jim McConaughey. <coughs> Uh, thank you. I'm Jim McConaughey, and I live in Concord's popular South End, and uh, I really have a kind of single issue here. Uh, I'm glad Pam Ian brought up the federal deficit because uh, people's eyes, you know, glaze over sort of instantly. But um, it's true. Every time uh, the, Homeland, the, the Department of Homeland Security gives away one of these uh, Bearcats, they add another quarter of a million dollars or so to the federal deficit. And if you care about that, you start doing something about it at this level. My main uh, issue with this uh, project is that it's part of this, what I would call this addiction to the federal handout. And this process that, that's in place that distorts your planning and your decision making and your setting of priorities. If the money is coming from some department of the federal government, then it doesn't need the kind of scrutiny that it would get if it came from the taxpayers in the city of Concord. And I think the chief made his own point here tonight that he would not come to you and ask you, the citizens of Concord, to pay $250,000 for this machine. So I think you need to build some kind of process into your decision making, this grant for swift water rescue and everything else that you get, so that you actually look at that money that's coming from the federal government as if it were your own money, as if it were coming out of the pockets of your own citizens. And I would like to see this council really take some leadership in this and to tell the people of the rest of the United States that we're not going to ask them to help pay for, frankly, uh, a semi-military device which has about as much utility here, I think, as probably a nuclear submarine. <laughs> It was a good line, but <laughs> I, only, I only use one. 
Thank you. I'll take Are there any questions on the Catholic Creditors? Thank you, Your Honor. The City of Nashua paid for theirs with drug seizure money. That would be acceptable? Well, I don't know. Is it their drug seizure money? <laughs> 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 How important is something? You voted to buy a big conservation easement tonight that you spent years evaluating because you believed it was important to the citizens of the state. And that's the kind of thoughtful process that should go into any kind of spending of taxpayers' dollars. And that's not what you're doing with this with this sheet. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the extra. Yeah, we didn't vote on the property yet, but uh, <laughs> thanks for coming. Samantha Kleinberg. I'll make this quick. I have written testimony, but um, I'll just get to you. Um, my name is Samantha Kleinberg. I'm a Crawford Lifer. I was born in Crawford Hospital. And, um, I don't take a personal offense to you calling free state a terrorist. I take a personal offense to you calling anybody a terrorist. I, I, I know you people didn't, but it's on the application. <clears throat> I know you're sick of it. You're gonna hear it over and over again. Sorry, it's the application that you're approving. So it is what it is, and it's fraudulent. And if you vote for it, you're voting for a fraud. That's all. Um, real quick, if I were to apply for um, a federal subsidy for myself, such as maybe say TANF or something, which I don't need, but if I were to apply for it and I embellish the application, I'm really, really very sure that I would be going to jail. Just to put it out there. Um, <clears throat> lastly, I just want to talk to you about integrity, and um, again, I'm a lifer, and <laughs> once upon a time, I thought the police were there to help me. I mean, rude awakening, that's all I have to say, is that uh, if our chief of police embellish an application, how are we supposed to believe that the department that he represents represents themselves in the courts honestly? It goes down, it trickles down. If your chief is not honest, why would his subordinates be honest? Why am I to believe that they have integrity in our courts and with people that they consider criminals? It's just a question. Thank you very much. Any questions? And I'm sorry, I'm barefoot. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Craig Green. Hi, I'm uh, Craig Green, and I live at 20 Maple Street in Concord. I moved here a couple of years ago from the New London area, and I really love Concord because of the community spirit that everyone has, the way that people participate in my neighborhood and, and helping the neighborhood run. And I think this is a bad idea, and it's for the simple reason that public safety is there to make people feel safe. And as you can see from the people gathered here, and we're not all free staters, I'm not a free stater. Um, we don't feel safe. Uh, we won't feel safe with this bear cat. You're making us feel less safe. And that's not the goal of public safety. Um, in my neighborhood, everyone I talk to, every single person is made afraid by this big thing, whatever we're gonna call it. People with guns are inside of it, even if it has no guns on it. And it's not good to make people afraid. That's not a way to, to, to help community. Um, and so I ask you, uh, the, the very heartfelt, that, that if you can't vote against it this time, at least delay your vote and get some more input. Be, uh, have a little more thought. Go, well, I'm sure a lot of thought has gone into it. But a little more discussion, if you could. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, uh, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a question for you. Councilor Dodd, come on. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, you saw the chief's presentation. Yes. And the, the two, the old vehicle and the new vehicle. Yes. I guess my question was, do you were you feeling safe up until you saw this Bearcat, or because there was an armored vehicle before, so were you feeling unsafe with that one as well? Well, one really interesting thing about this entire phenomenon is it's revealed that we have an armored vehicle in Concord, and that's actually made my neighbors feel more unsafe. Now, let me, there's a difference. Uh, Saturday night I was in Bicentennial Square with some friends, and some uh, policemen bicycled through. And there's the usual, like, oh, oh, policemen, right? But then one of the person who was sitting there drinking said, no, no, they're okay. They come through on their beat. They walk their beat. And the difference between an armored vehicle and walking your beat is the difference between community policing 
and the military. I mean, not to push the term too far. And I think we've got to respect community policing and really advocate for that. And I think that's what a lot of folks are trying to do here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have, well, I've actually been skipping this card because there's no name on it. Uh, but they're here representing humanity, so I, I can't <laughs> ask this. <laughs> so if you're the one up front, I represent humanity. And you want 90 seconds, sure. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> That counts as part of your 90 seconds. That's right. I ran over here. <laughs> I heard this was going on, so I just needed to Thank you very much. What's your name, sir? Where are you from? Humanity. Pete Martino from Epsom. Thank you. You don't need this. You really don't. I was a colonel. I'm a retired colonel in the Marine Corps. I saw a sign back there that said, we want more Mayberry and less Fallujah. And I spent a year in Fallujah. You know what? When I first got there, I didn't have armored uh, Humvees, and I spent uh, I traveled over ten thousand miles over there. And sometimes you got to deal with and go with what you have. And so that's part of the job, for one. The second thing is, though, when I was in Iraq, I was in charge. I was the Ministry of Defense coordinator. My job was to man, train, and equip the Iraqi army in Al Anbar, Najaf, Karbala, and Northern Bukhara provinces. And I can tell you right now. Well, somebody had the great idea to get rid of the Iraqi army, so when we rebuilt it, we did everything we could to make it as strong as possible. And I'll tell you right now, Homeland Security would kick their butts in a week. What's happening here is we're building a domestic military because it's unlawful or unconstitutional to use American troops on American soil. So what we're doing is we're building a military. My best friend, who's a SWAT officer in Nashua, who came to Iraq with me to train the Iraqi police, sent me an email with a picture of him in the media on the streets of Watertown, Mass, wearing the exact same combat gear that we had in Iraq, only it was a different color. And what, the way we do things in the military is called task organization. You take a command, and then you attach units to it in order to accomplish the mission. What's happening is Homeland Security is pre-staging gear, equipment, consistent. What they're trying to do is use standardized vehicles, standardized equipment. I saw a picture in the Boston Globe during the marathon bombing where there was a state police officer. Actually, there were two officers. They both had identical helmets, flak jackets, weapons, everything I wore in Iraq, only it was all blue. The officer on one side had a big patch on his back that said Massachusetts State Police. Another officer next to him, his patch said Boston Police. And so what we're doing here, and let's not kid about it, we're building a domestic army and we're shrinking the military because the government is afraid of its own citizens. The last time more than 10 terrorists were in the same place at one time was September 11th, and all these vehicles in the world wouldn't have prevented it, nor would it have helped anybody. So I don't know where we're going to use this many vehicles and this many troops. Concord is just one little cog in the wheel. We're building an army over here, and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? That's all I'll take. Yeah. 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 Yeah, please, I know you know it's a passionate issue, but if you would please, please, for the first time, I'm asking you uh, not to, to boo or clap one way or the other. I'll take any questions. Any questions? Thank my wife always told my kids there's always free cheese in the mouse trap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Ray Fitzgerald. Can I use my time to Ray? I need at least to use all his time. No. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's give him a little credit for us. Fitzgerald, you can say your name and where you're from. Please. I'm Gray Fitzgerald. I live at 28 Washington Street here in Concord. And uh, I have been trying to adjust what I was what I want to say here tonight. Quite frankly, with this issue, I was totally asleep about it. I hardly knew what a bear cap I didn't know what a bear cap was until a friend asked me and and then I, I found out that it is, uh, and when I read about it, when I read this article from the application, and was shocked to consider, to realize that the, bear, the justification for the bearcat uh, 
part of it was, was that Occupy New Hampshire